Welcome back to our Wednesday interview. Today we are meeting with Rita Wright. She is an assistant clinical professor in the Department of Social Work and has her master's in social work with a child welfare specialization. She's also the program coordinator for the Child Welfare Training Project, which is one of the partners that Sage Home has. Welcome, Rita. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm glad you, sh I'm glad you came. Um, the first question I have for you is, can you tell me a little bit about the Child Welfare Training Project and a little bit about child welfare in general? Sure. So uh, the Child Welfare Training Program is at Northern Arizona University. There's many programs like it across the nation. So basically, um, the federal government recognizes that social workers actually do a better job in child welfare than professionals who don't hold degrees in social work or related fields. So um, because of that, they created funding out of the 4E Streaming Fund, which is a, a fund for child welfare services, to pay for social workers to get their education um, in exchange for an agreement to work in child welfare. So the purpose of the program is to draw people with social work degrees into child welfare practice. Um, what is child welfare? <laughs> That's a great question. So um, I think when we talk about child welfare or many people's conception of child welfare is primarily child safety. So um, the image that's conjured when we mention child welfare is child removal. Um, but there's more than just safety, right? So, so making sure children is safe is a primary component, um, but we call it child welfare because we're also considering their well-being and their permanency. Um, and because we recognize that permanency is really important for children, um, our primary goal is actually keeping them with the most permanent placement possible, which is their family, their biological family. Um, so while we see child welfare systems in movies, most often removing children, and we think about the foster care system, et cetera, actually the primary role of child welfare is to try to strengthen families to keep children in their homes. All right. Nice. And then um, a clarifying question. At the Child Welfare Training Project, do, do you guys carry a caseload? We do. So um, we are a contracted unit with the Department of Child Safety. So we carry ongoing DCS cases. We have a full unit that's housed in the DCS office, um, with supervisor, two case managers, and a case aide. So yes, we carry a full caseload. Um, and it's actually, it's actually a reduced caseload because our primary goal is to train social workers. So we don't want to overburden our workers um, by providing uh, like unlimited DCS cases. So they carry a caseload that's consistent with the national um, NASW recommendations um, so that they can focus on training social work students. Okay. Great. And then um, when it comes to child welfare, what are some of the things that make it harder to keep families together? Um, and what, why, are, why does child welfare kind of have a bad reputation in a lot of people's eyes? <laughs> um, so, oh, that's a complicated question, Monica. So I think that there's a lot of reason child welfare has a bad reputation. One is probably portrayal in media and um, in movies and shows. So obviously child welfare systems get more um, representation in the media when there's perceived failures. Um, we don't get a lot of representation when we're keeping families together, right? And the system is working. Um, so there's definitely some negative media bias. Um, there's also, you know, like, we have to think about that the system can only serve clients as well as resources are available. So particularly in rural areas, it can be a lot more challenging to get clients the services that they really need and could really benefit from. Um, you probably know that we're pretty dependent on Medicaid as a source of um, service providers. So again, in more rural areas, there's limited options for Medicaid-run clinics for mental health, 
for addiction treatment, um, even for basic health care. So it can be challenging uh, in different geographic areas to get clients the services that they need. Yeah. So resources are a big deal in the child welfare game. You know, if there's not somewhere to keep the families while they're safe, then, then separation is really the next best option. Right. So our primary goal is to preserve the family system. Um, and I think that there's literature that supports that as we lose resources that help us monitor um, children safely in the home, we see an increase in removals. So there's, you know, national data that back during the recession in around 2009, when we started cutting funding for in-home services and such, so some of those services that were keeping providers in the home, um, as those services got cut, we saw an increase in removals, right? So if, if we have less resources to ensure child safety, it makes us harder to preserve family systems. Right. And um, lastly, what makes reunification more likely? Um, so reunification is more successful when we're able to engage families, when we get their buy-in in, in services, when they feel like they're part of the team, um, and when team members are working together. So often we, so we can't have child welfare without addiction treatment and without mental health and without a lot of these other systems. Um, but we don't always do a really great job of integrating those systems and working together. Um, so oftentimes we have clients going to several different facilities for several different treatment services, often without transportation, often with children. Um, and I mean, even for me to think about trying to do that with like a vehicle and resources um, is overwhelming. And then we're surprised when clients aren't successful with it. Right. So when we can bring teams together to the client and integrate services around them, um, that's when we see better outcomes for families. Yes. Yeah. And um, as far as Sage Home is concerned, how do you see the partnership between the Child Welfare Training Project and Sage Home going? And how do you see that uh, helping families be more successful at reunification? So the services that Sage Home is providing or proposing are really exciting for child welfare systems, um, particularly here in Northern Arizona. So there is a lot of evidence that shows that when we can provide um, substance abuse treatment services for pregnant and parenting women and fathers, um, with their children staying in their care, we see much better outcomes for the children and the families. Unfortunately, we don't have that resource um, in Northern Arizona. So there isn't really anywhere we can send parents for treatment that doesn't involve them having to leave their children, um, which is really hard decision to make for parents, right? So in order to get treatment, they have to leave their family system, which is probably a primary motivator for seeking treatment, right? Um, and so we know that when we remove children from parents and when we decrease that interaction, um, parents' outcomes start to decline. So if we have that resource here in Northern Arizona where we can keep the family systems together and provide those services without disrupting those systems, we know we're going to see better outcomes for children and families. All right. Well, that was very well said. Thank you so much for giving us a little bit more insight in the Child Welfare Training Project and child welfare in general. And, uh, Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for all your hard work, Marka. We're excited. <laughs> Thanks. I look forward to working with you more in the future.